What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of Dubai, season one, episode two, The Goat. So before we get into the episode, um, in the last recap, I didn't go over the taglines because I had tried to like, I thought that the opening sequence was just so like breathtaking and cool that I like tried to put the, the whole like minute long section in there, but I got copyright claims so I'd take it out. So I want to kind of go over the taglines now because, just full disclosure, I love going over taglines. I love like li listening to them every season and just getting the vibe of the character and the whole, um, the whole season basically of like what every girl's gonna bring, if you will. Um, and I fell in love with Dubai. It's like I will rewatch it, re-listen to it because I love it. Um, specifically Caroline, um, Caroline Brooks's. And I'll get into it later. So I'm gonna go over the taglines real quickly, and um, if you don't want to listen to them, just go ahead and skip ahead a little bit, but let's go over the taglines. Chanel Ayan. They don't hate me because I'm beautiful. They hate me because they're basic. So obviously, right off the bat, she's giving you what, she's giving us what she's given, you know, that she knows she's super confident, knows she's that girl. Gosh, I wonder if she's a Leo. I really get Leo vibes from like Chanel Ayan in like a good way. Uh, ooh, let me go over all. Let me let me guess all of it because I I don't know any of their like zodiac signs. Let me guess them. Let me try to guess them. But yeah, that's Chanel. That's Chanel Ayan's. Sarah Almadani. A woman should be two things: who and what she wants. So again, similar to Ayan, she's giving us her her whole rebellious, uh, feminist kind of thing, if you will, because she kind of starts it as like. They're like, oh, a woman should be two things. Should be respectful, subservient, whatever the fuck, you know? But she's like, it should be two things. Who and what she wants, you know? So she kind of subverts that um, mentality, if you will. I think you get what I'm saying. But, and so with Sarah, I was thinking maybe Taurus, you know, just going after her, like, a little, whole rebellious kind of thing. She goes with what she believes. So maybe Taurus, or maybe, like, Sagittarius. She's kind of like adventurous, you know? So yeah, I'm guessing that for Sarah. Caroline Brooks, my favorite one. The desert is ruthless, but nothing's more savage than me. And I'm like, because I'm, I'm like born and raised in a desert area, and there are like these huge sand dunes like fairly nearby. And I used to go up to them when I was like a little kid, go like on quads and stuff. So I'm like, oh my God, this winter, because it's way too hot to do it right now. I'm like, this winter, I have to go out to the sand dunes, take a picture like out there and like, use that caption for it. Like, it's perfect. Like, um, so with Caroline Brooks, uh, with Brooks, with two Carolines, uh, there's North and South Carolina, <laughs> but with Brooks, um, that doesn't seem to be Gemini, just because everyone's saying she's messy, she's a flip-flop or whatever. Maybe Gemini or, like, Maybe Gemini or Sagittarius in Scorpio. What? I'm guessing I'm thinking Gemini. Lisa Milan, another great tagline. The only thing you can take from me is notes. And so, um, for Lisa, I'm not too sure. Maybe, um, maybe Capricorn? I don't know, maybe Capricorn or like, Capricorn or Cancer, maybe? I mean, Capricorn or Cancer, final answer. Nina Ali. If you believe, uh, what would she, I didn't write him down, what did she say? Uh, oh, if you, if you don't believe money can buy you happiness, you clearly haven't been to Dubai. So with Nina, I'm thinking really like, um, maybe Cancer or Virgo, you know, maybe like, um, like motherly kind of thing. Cancer or Virgo, I would say. And finally, Stanberry, because she, she doesn't like me called Stanberry, so I'm calling her that. Um, oh, in the city of gold, nothing shines brighter than me, which isn't true, because Chanel Ayan stole the show from you, girl. Um, and with her, I'm thinking maybe, maybe like Capricorn or Leo, one of those two maybe. Um, but yeah, because Caroline Stamberg was set up to, like, have it be all about her, but it clearly isn't. But, um, she's still, you know, she's still trudging along. So as for the actual episode, it starts off with Sarah Almadani and her son, Maktoum. They're, um, hanging out in the kitchen, and he's, uh, they're cooking, they're baking a cake together. And Sarah, she's asking him, like, 
is cooking um, just for women or for um, men and women? And he's like, both. And um, so she's kind of, and she talks about how, like, She's been a single mother since the day he was born. So she, like, left her, her husband um, when she was pregnant, presumably. Um, and she doesn't raise her son in the way that his father would like. Because she, she's, like, actively trying to go against the whole toxic masculinity bullshit. She talks about how, like, in their culture, men are taught to, like, in every culture, damn near, you know. Um, men are taught to, like, hide their feelings and not cry and... But she's like, no, you're a human being, you know, like, um, she's really a big on that. Again, going back to her tagline, her whole, like, very feminist mindset, which is really pretty cool to see. Um, and she's also talks about how she's, like, actively, uh, on the other hand, if you will, she's actively trying to maintain some cultural traditions. She's trying to keep some things alive. And she talks about how, like, um, cause she, she grew up, she was born and raised in the UAE. And she talks about how, like, lunch and dinner was always eaten on the floor. They have, like, these, um, these beautiful floor mats. They put them on the floor, and you eat your, your dinner, like, uh, sitting on the floor, basically, with your family. Um, so much like how you do it, like, um, like, Japanese culture, I guess, but without the, 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 but without the little short table, it's just on the floor. Um, at least from what I saw from the scene. And, um, she also, like, she tries, you know, doing with her son and, like, eating with, uh, without the utensils, like, just with your hand. And he was just not with it. He's, like, six years old, and he was just, like, no, I don't like this. He's not really open to it yet. Um, but Sarah, she's, like, okay, you can eat on the table, but I mean, I mean, on the floor. <laughs> I mean, the traditional way. So, um, it's cool to see how Sarah talk Sarah's talking about how she's, like, trying to go, um, She's kind of, like, going against certain things in the culture, like, the toxic masculinity aspect. She's trying to raise her son to not fall into that. But she's trying to maintain certain ultra culture, certain all, excuse me, certain other cultural traditions, like the um, eating on the floor, and the, uh, she wants him to try to speak Arabic more and stuff like that. Um, so it's really cool to see from that perspective. Then we get a scene with Caroline Brooks and Lisa Milan, they're waking up for some drinks. Um, and Brooks, she... She begins by saying that she feels a connect. It's in a confessional. She says that she feels a connection with Lisa because of their, like, Caribbean roots. And she talks about how, like, her maternal grandmother was, uh, is a was 100% Jamaican. And then, um, fucking Lisa in her confessional, she's like, Brooks is something different every day. She has multiple personality disorder. One week, she's Jamaican. Another week, she's Afro, um, she's Afro-Latino. Another week, she's African-American. Next week, she'll be Emirati. Like, she doesn't get it together. And I was like, Lisa, she could be all those things. Her, because for the last episode, I didn't talk about it, but there's one scene where they're, like, talking about their stripper names, which is, like, the name of your first pet and your mother's maiden name. And Caroline's was, like, Fluffy Martinez. So her maiden name is Martinez. Uh, well, her, her mother's maiden name is Martinez. And so it's like, yeah, her mother is Jamaican and her father could either be Afro-Latino or maybe like Dominican or, you know what I mean? Or some uh, Mexican, maybe like, who knows? Um, well, she's from Boston, so I'm guessing either Dominican or Puerto Rican. But so I'm like, so yeah, and she could be, so she's like Afro-Latino from that and her dad could be Af um, African-American. So I'm like, yeah, Caroline Brooks could be Jamaican, Afro-Latino, and um, African American, you know, like depending on ooh, my shoulders, yeah, I like see you. You hear me pop. Um, it just depends on her. I don't know. Sounds like girl, she could be all those things. Calm down, <laughs> but um, but yeah. So just a little funny moment. Shortly thereafter, Brooks goes on the talk, basically being shit talking Nina Ali because um, Nina posted something on Instagram essentially where of her and Caroline Stanberry. And she was like, every blonde needs a brunette best friend. Or every brunette needs a blonde best friend. Something along those lines. Um, and Brooks is kind of like, since when are they so close? And Brooks suggests that Nina is a flip-flopper. And I'm like, girl, that's what everyone said about you in episode one. So I'm kind of like, what? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so she says that Nina's a flip-flopper because allegedly um, Nina would shit-talk Stanberry back in the day. Like... When Lisa was um, kind of getting to know Stanberry, Nina was like, oh, I guess she allegedly said some bad things about Stanberry. 
when Stanberry was trying to befriend me, Nina would warn me to be careful of her. And to be honest, some of the things that she said were so horrible, I won't even repeat it. Um, she's ghetto, she's ratchet, she's trashy. Those are the good things. All the things that I'm saying are the good things. So that seed's planted, and then immediately thereafter, Brooks goes on the kind of dish more about her relationship with Ayan. Um, she said they have an interesting relationship. Um, like, they hella vibe, but they go at it like rams. And she goes on to say, like, they, um, I, I can't live with her, can't live without her. It's very much giving, like, Karen and Giselle vibes from Potomac. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, we're cool, we're friends and stuff, but, like, you know, we'll go at it a little bit. But, you know, she's, she's my friend, but we'll go at it. And it was funny, it reminded me, because, um, this past weekend, I was out in... I was over in LA with some, it was me and like five other gay dudes all in this one Airbnb. And um, three of them I'm like super cool with. Like we're just a hell of good vibes. But with two of them, it was like throwing daggers all weekend. It was like kind of, it was not like a bad, it was just like a, a sassy, catty, like talking shit kind of way. Um, it was like, so I, I really felt that. It was like, you know, we're cool, but you know, we'll, we'll talk shit and get nasty, but you know, we're still cool. So that's what they're bringing. And it's a new day and the Carolines are linking up at Stanbury's house. So Carolyn Stanbury invited Brooks over to her pad. Um, and Stanbury, she kind of goes on a dish a little bit about how buying a house in Dubai is so much different than elsewhere in the world. Because apparently if you're self-employed, which I guess a lot of people in there in Dubai are, uh, if you're self-employed, you cannot get a mortgage. And so you have to put like, 30 to 40 percent of the house down like in cash like what so it's different from like the rest of the world so it's again it, it's dubai honey like you, you girl dorit you cannot come here <laughs> um then sarah rolls in all three of them have a fucking stanbury dog on their lap caroline stanbury has like fucking like four or five fucking dogs and i'm like i i get it like I, my mom's a dog person too, but it's like, they're all like young dogs who are probably in potty train. We saw that one dog, Coco, like piss in Caroline's bed in episode one. So I'm like, girl, like, same thing with Kyle, you know, it's like, yeah, we're dog people, but like, we don't have dogs eating food off of our plates and we don't have dogs pissing in our bed. Like, ooh, girl. Um, then we're all together. Stanberg brings up the drama from Nina's party about how basically Stanberry and Brooks got into it with Ayan. Um, and Sarah, she goes on to kind of, um, give her insight. She really shows, Sarah is very emotionally intelligent. We kind of learned that a lot in this episode. Um, Sarah says that Ayan was, like, clearly triggered by something. And Stanbury was like, oh, what? Like, from not being invited to the bachelorette party? And Sarah's like, no, no, it wasn't that. It was likely something from her past. I'm sure something was said that triggered her, possibly. And, um, Sarah goes on to talk about how she... She's a certified life coach, and um, she really wants to help Ayan, and uh, she really just wants to um, basically just be there for her and just help her out. But Stanbury, she's just not with it really at all. I think we should leave her better than the way we found her. No, I really don't need to accept her time or her energy right now. I'm very sorry if she's had trauma in her life, but <laughs> she's not gonna add to mine. <laughs> And then yet another sit down, we have uh, Chanel Ayan looking with Nina Ali. Um, Ayan gets there first, she's sitting down. She gives us what we love her for. She's like, I look good, fucking good. I look good, I fucking look good. Um, Nina pulls up, she feels underdressed and Ayan, she's, um, because they say look good and Ayan, she's all, I think she's wearing Givenchy. Um, I don't remember what she's wearing, um, but she's like, Right off the runway, and Nina's kind of like, oh, I'm more casual for casual lunch. Um, and Ayan says that she's Rihanna, while Nina is mashed potatoes with no butter. Plain. It's like, I'm Rihanna, and then Nina, mashed potatoes with no butter. Plain. I don't need to wear my wealth. I just wear what's comfortable. I have love for Nina. She tries. She tries. <laughs> um, and speaking of mashed potatoes, they're going to begin talking about Thanksgiving and just kind of what they're going to be doing. Um, Nina talks about how, like, because she, Nina was born in Lebanon, but she moved to Texas when she was, like, three, and she grew up there. So she's like, I love Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorite holidays. So we still celebrate it, even though we're in Dubai. And Ayan, she's like, uh, Ayan, who's from Kenya, 
Well, she said she's from Kenya, but this episode she says she's from Somalia. Maybe she's like the border or because they're they're like right next to each other. But I think she it says she's from Kenya. Um, she goes on to say that um, she's like, oh, like Thanksgiving's still a very weird holiday. But, you know, I'm African. Like, we've had many colonizers, so I don't want to get too into it. It's like, yes, girl. Start the start the conversation. <laughs> and then switching gears, Ayan goes on to basically ask Nina about, like, why she didn't, like, have her back at the dinner. Why she didn't defend her when she was getting into it with um, Stanberry, I believe. Um, and Nina, she's more passive about the situation. She's kind of like... Oh, well, like, Ayan, like, if, like, if you don't like her, why do you care? Like, you and her aren't friends. Why do you care? And she's also like, just don't invite her to your next event. Even Steven. You know, so I'm like, I get where Nina's coming from. She's like, that's your guys' thing. Um, I'm not gonna insert myself in this drama because I'm friends with both of you. And, you know, they're just, girls just do the same thing to her. And why, why does it bother you? Because remember, Nina, she's more, like, a hippy-dippy. She's more laid back, so... That's her perspective, which I completely understand. Um, and Ayan um, seemingly confirming what Sarah said uh, um, with Stanbury and Brooks. Um, Ayan tells Nina that she felt triggered at the dinner and she talks about how, um, about how her triggering was related to like her dad's um, physical abuse and disregard of her and how she grew up really, really feeling unimportant and disregarded and... Um, she felt as though Stanbury deliberately tried to exclude her from something and not, like, set her off, basically. So we really see how Sarah's brought the money when it comes to, like, her reading of the situation. And similarly, Nina goes on to address what um, Lisa and Brooks were talking about, about how, at first, Nina really didn't like Stanbury. She was like, she wasn't my cup of tea, I didn't really like her that much, and I was like, oh, I know, you told me. So apparently, I guess Nina may have been a little bit of a shit talker, like, when she didn't like her. But, you know, that's, that's how it happens. You know, if you don't fucking like someone at first, you think they're a bitch and stuff. But, like, well, girl, what did you say? Like, how much shit were you talking? But, you know, we don't know, this. We don't know that at this point. Um, but Nina's like, no, I didn't like her at first, but I grew to like her after I gave her a chance. And Nina's saying this to essentially encourage Ayan to do the same for Stanbury. She's like, I know she may rub you the wrong way now, the, the wrong way now. Um, but if you give her a chance, you it made something may blossom. And Nina also shares that Stanbury didn't like her at first. Like, their dislike for each other was mutual, if you will. And so, um, but a friendship blossoms from that. So, uh, but Ayan, she's not really with it. She goes on to say, like, in her confessional later on, she's like, who made Nina the, the since when is she the Dalai Lama? Like, calm down. Because Nina really wants to, like, facilitate a sit down between the two, if you will. But Ayan's just not really with it. So they're kind of... Ayan and Stanberry are, like, in a similar boat where they're like, girl, I don't want to fuck with you. Like, girl, bye. And then we have a little mini montage. Um, some things that stood out to me were, like... Um, so Stanberry buying jewelry was kind of a scene for a couple of them. It would be, like, her checking out a $1.6 million watch in one scene, and then be another girl. And her checking out, like, a two point seven million dollar necklace and another scene and it was kind of like a little montage but broken up um but towards the end of it so again it's her just checking out these fabulous pieces of jewelry and then um with the last little scene it's her and sergio sergio's with her and he like gets really emotional he starts like crying and tearing up and stuff and caroline's like oh my gosh like i can't believe i'm marrying you like in, like, in the sense of like I'm just such a cold bitch, and you're so emotional, and it's just, and hot, and it's like, ugh. But, you know, I, I'm here for the role reversal, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm here for the older, cold, British cougar getting with the, the young, sensitive Latin lover, and it's like, I'm, I'm here for it. You know, we see it all the fucking time in the reverse, the young, hot housewife getting with the older guy. But it's like, no, we're seeing the reverse, and I, I'm here for it. Do you, said here? I'm here for you. Um, and another scene, um, Nina, she's at the supermarket with her youngest son, Christian, and um, she goes on the kind of dish on the, the pork section of Dubai supermarkets. So apparently um, the pork is in a totally different section of the store that is reserved for, like, non-Muslims. Um, like, and literally, before you walk in, it says, like, for non-Muslims. Um, so you walk in, and... It's just kind of giving us a bit uh, more insight onto the country because it's so, so new to to me, at least, and to many others. 
Um, and then it's really cute. So Nina FaceTimes um, Lisa while she's with, um, out shopping and she kind of like um, goes and she answers it. And before this, she had given her son like one cookie. Like she opened the bag of Oreos and let him have one. Um, and then while she's so distracted on the phone, uh, he just keeps eating the cookies. And Nina's just talking about like the Stanbury Ion situation. She's not really saying anything of, of value at this point. And he's just eating the cookies. He thinks like three or four of them. And it's just so funny because he just has, um, it reminds me of like um, G Herbo's son, Yoshan, like that the video, of the, the meme of him after he eats his Oreos. If you know, you know. Um, but just so funny and cute. He wants to get out the supermarket. So I'm gonna love you and leave you. Bye. Say bye, say bye, say bye. bye. Okay, honey, bye. bye. Christian. Christian, have you been eating cookies this whole time? Huh? Oh, now you want to close it. All the evidence is on your face. I thought I told you no more cookies until you got home. Cookies. Then it's Thanksgiving morning. Um, Lisa, she is chefing it up in the kitchen. She says that, yeah, she could have everything catered, but she loves cooking. She's having a Jamaican, as she calls it, Jamaican-American Thanksgiving. And she loves cooking, her family loves her cooking, and so she's she's in the kitchen by herself doing it, which I love, you know what I mean? It's the whole like, yeah, I could pay for it, but I this is something I want to do. I enjoy doing this, and I, frankly, I know how to do it better, you know? So I love that for Lisa. Um, Nina, she's going a different route. She's having a Thanksgiving. It's really cool, so it's on this like Ferris wheel, basically. It's like this huge like luxury like restaurant kind of thing but you're dining in this like ferris wheel but it's it's not like shaking all crazy or anything it's i don't know how to explain it it's like a smooth ferris wheel while you're just eating with like a rotational view i would hate that though oh my gosh like i get nauseous i don't know without moving but anyway that's what nina's doing um sarah and her son are there too with the, uh, they invited them and they're having a traditional thanksgiving meal with a uh, with a Dubai twist. And rather at dinner, we learned more about Nina's husband, uh, Munaf. Um, he was a banker who turned into a hotelier. He got into hotel chains. And he eventually sold his businesses and got into crypto and Bitcoin, all kinds of shit like that. So that's what he's into. I was, I'm like, okay, man, <laughs> do your thing. Um, and we also learned oddly, so he met, so he's from Dubai. And remember, Nina is from Austin. And they met through Nina's cousin's brother-in-law. So, essentially, Munaf saw a picture. Uh, I hope I'm saying his name right. I didn't, I didn't hear anyone say it. I just saw it written. Um, he saw a photo of Nina and inquired about her. And that's how they got into talking. Um, and then he wound up eventually flying from Dubai to America every two to three weeks. Which is a major time zone switch. Like, I just recently looked this up, like, to get from, to get from L.A. to, uh, Sydney, so just scaling the Pacific Ocean, it's like a 15, 16 hour flight. And I'm like, oh my god. And Dubai is, like, even more, like, on the opposite end, because it's, like, past the Pacific and, like, the Indian Ocean, you know what I mean? Um, or the entire Atlantic Ocean and Africa and the Middle East, so it's basically on the other end of the globe, if you will. And it's like, holy shit, every two, uh, oh my God. Um, but you, you know, it's probably not that bad when you're taking, when you're that rich, you take luxurious first class red eyes and sleep in a comfy bed. Like it's probably not that bad. Um, but it was kind of creepy almost. Like the whole like, yeah, I saw a picture of me and asked about me and eventually fly. Like, I don't know, it was kind of weird, but I don't know. Maybe, if, maybe it's the kind of, if you know, you know, kind of thing. I don't know. I was kind of like, oh, that's a weird story. Uh, but anyway, then the Sarah, in turn, she also kind of dishes more about her past relationships. Um, she has, she has been married tw married and divorced twice. And she described herself as being a fixer in toxic relationships. So that's, that was her kind of, uh, that was her downfall, if you will, in her relationship, in her relationships at least. Um, but she says, despite being divorced twice, she still believes in love. You know, when she sees her mother and her father in their relationship, she's like, you know, I could still get married. I could still have my fairy tale. And so Sarah's really going for um, feeling that. And her parents support her and everything that she's doing. But they are kind of worried about, like, 
the 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 social ramifications, like the the judgment from others, that kind of thing. But the parents are really open minded and cool with it. It seems so. Um, that's really cool for Sarah. It's a really. It seems like um, she's in a really open minded family, and it's really cool seeing Sarah really pave her own way and be a trailblazer in terms of like doing her own thing, but while also trying to keep the culture alive of certain things. So. I really admire that of Sarah, to be honest. Um, then elsewhere, it's a little bit later um, in the evening. Um, Ayan, her husband Chris, and their son Taj, they all arrive up to Lisa's home um, for a, a late Thanksgiving dinner. And they brought a fucking baby goat. <laughs> and um, Chanel, uh, Ayan eventually explains that like, oh, it's... Um, in my culture, you know, goats are very important to us. You know, if someone gets married or engaged, you give them goats. And she kind of talks about how she wanted to give Lisa something very meaningful because um, Lisa's just really been there for her. And so you really see the duality to Ayana and where she stands on certain things because she felt really betrayed by Nina for not standing up for her with Stanberry. But Lisa, who has her back, Ayana just pours love into her. She's like, you have my back and I love you for that. So um, you always see her standing on how she operates, if you will. She rides for me, I ride for her so hard. She's always there for me. Like she's got my back and that's something that you don't buy. She just loves me and I love her. Ayan goes on to speak on her husband, Chris. Um, and she kind of talks about how he, he taught her how to love. Um, they met like when she was, she was like 18 years old. Uh, I think he was, he, he was, like, maybe, like, a little bit older, but not, not like, crazy older. Um, they met, like, when they were really young, and they've been together since 1999, married for 20-plus years at that point, um, and their son, he's, like, 14, so they were married for a while before they had a kid, too, so, and he talks about how, like, um, you know, she, she just makes him laugh, and he loves it, and he taught her how to love, and he taught her what true love is, and... Just such a beautiful relationship, it seems. Um, it really seems like it's, like, he is reserved. In, he's, like, he lets Ayan steal a show and lets her be herself while supporting her, if you will. It, um, it was really, it was really cool dynamic. I really liked it. Um, then Sideline, the goat, who's just kind of out roaming in the backyard, he falls into the fucking pool. <laughs> and the young son has to go rescue it out. And so it was, like, a funny moment. Um... Then immediately thereafter, Ayan proceeds to talk to Lisa about how, again, how she felt like Nina didn't support her at the dinner. Um, she kind of feels like Car uh, uh, Nina is siding with Caroline Stanbury. Like, Lisa points out to Ayan that, like, oh, well, Nina's closer to you than with Stanbury. And Ayan's like, well, she's not acting like it. She seems like that's not the case anymore. So she really feels with that. And she really just does not want to have a sit down with Stanbury. So she's very anti Stanberry and she's kind of going into anti Nina because Nina's getting a little too close to Stanberry for Ayan's liking. Um then later on they find out that the goat like ran away. It like slipped through the fence. It was like, girl I'm out. It, it heard what fucking Lisa said about being cooked and it was like, girl I am out. So <laughs> So that was really a little funny end to the whole scene. And then for the last scene of the episode, um, it's another day and Ayan is going over to Sarah's house. And it was really cute. So Ayan, she pulls up with a basket of onions and she's like, oh, because you have layers, like here's some onions. <laughs> and it was cute. So Ayan, she talks about how, you know, she was raised to never bring, never show up someone's house empty handed, you know, that, so that was really, um, you know, that's what uh, people are pressure to do too. They'll, Show up, they should show up with like a bottle of some sort or some type of food, you know. So I am sticking to that, but she's uh, she, she's going OG, right? <laughs> she showed up with a goat with goats and onions, damn it. So that's really cute. Um, and Sarah and Ayan they kind of go on to speak about how like they felt a vibe with each other, you know, kind of connected with, with their energies and they want to get to know each other better. And uh, while doing so, Sarah goes to speak about her childhood, about how she was very strong-willed and she was an entrepreneur from a young age she would like buy candy from the store in like bulk and resell it to her cousins for, like a higher a slightly higher price um so that was how she grew up and uh, yeah, similarly she talks about how like um after her father left her mother basically and her mom was single Ayan really stepped up to stepped up to the plate and like 
she'd um really go and really help out her mom with like buying things going around and just helping out and so they have similar they really learn strong work ethic in their childhood is basically what they're saying that's how they connect going off of ayan's father abandoning the family um sarah asks ayan if she's forgiven her father it's just kind of um, honing in on that and Ayan says no and that she has not spoken to him in 26 years um he essentially tried to trick her into being he tried to trick her into marrying her off um back when she was 14 years old he was like oh come with me we'll go on like a trip I haven't seen you in so long we'll bond and then her sister was like don't go with him he's trying to marry you off so um that, and I believe that may have been, like, the last time they spoke, um, going off of, like, a 26-year thing. Um, so that's what happened, and she was talking about how she was brutally abused and, um, beaten by him, and she gets very emotional. Um, she and Sarah can have a moment, they hug, and just kind of get teary-eyed. Um, then she also optimistically speaks on how, it, despite all that stuff, her husband Chris taught her how to be how to feel safe taught her how to feel loved and what love is so um he was all it's really uh, a cute uh, moment for her it's really emotional um and yeah she also goes on dish about how that situation at nina's house kept took her back to that mindset of being disregarded and um not wanted uh that same mindset she had as a child that was given to her by her father um and so as mentioned she and sarah they have a moment and sarah goes on to recommend hypnotherapy and she talks about how it helped her get through her issues and about how um relationships were really her past marriages were really bad there is uh physical and um mental abuse and it helped her with her own trauma and um, she goes to say a quote that that was really, um, really impactful. She says, when you're triggered, you bleed on people who didn't cut you. And so in a way to kind of like encourage Ayan to um, look into therapy. So that was a really cool moment. Um, Sarah's kind of just noticed, telling her, hey, you know, this may be useful for you. It's maybe um, a useful tool. Um, so that was a cool moment, I guess. And they seem to really truly connect. Um, they seem to truly be in this, be building a, a nice friendship. Um, and Ayan says that she seems she's kind of open at looking to therapy. And she also does a little shade at Brooks because she's like, you know, Brooks went, goes to therapy, but I'm not so I'm not sure if the therapy work really works because Brooks is still fucking crazy. So it was a really cool moment. It's nice to see Ayan and Sarah really building a friendship. And so yeah, it was a really, really cute episode. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, stay tuned for more episodes and recaps. All right. Thanks. Bye.